Welcome to another Digital Adventures Let's Build. Today, we will be creating a Fall Guys game in Scratch, or replicating it, it's not going to be exact, uh, called Door Dash. And in this game, there are a bunch of doors in rows, and you try to break through them. Some doors can be broken through, and some cannot be. Um, and try to, your goal is to try and make it through all the way till the end so that you can move on to the next round and not get eliminated. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my scratch opened up. Now today I've already created the character, the bean here. Uh, I decided to design the, the pigeon bean because I thought that was funny. Um, and the way I did that was I just pressed this paintbrush tool down here and then it will bring you to the costumes where you can use these tools to draw your character. Um, I also have created a door. Now my door is just a square, but I have two costumes today. I have a closed door and an open door. Uh, the open door is just, you know, looks like that. It does, it's not special. And I place it up at the top here. And I'm going to start with one door and I'm going to program that and then I'm going to create uh, duplicate doors. So that way I don't have to re, uh, redo the code every time. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, come to the bean here, the uh, fall guy, and I am going to give it some code so we can move uh, using the arrow keys on our keyboard. Um, and I'll try to do that right now. Uh, the first thing I'll need to know is uh, where I'm going to start this character. I'm just going to place him at the bottom. Um, X will say zero for the position of X and minus 120 would be fine for that. So the next thing I'll need to do uh, is make sure they start there. So inside of motion I'll do go to XY and those numbers will be the same as the ones I just typed in. So every time I press the green flag to start the game it puts our bean back or our fall guy our pigeon bean back to the beginning. <laughs> pigeon bean. Um, for movement I always want to be able to move so we'll say forever and we'll use four if statements for the four arrows. So if I right click here, it gives me another if statement, or right click and duplicate. So I got my four statements, and we will use sensing. Um, I'm going through this quickly because I know I've done this before, and um, you might be able to do this on your own by now. So if pressing up arrow, Great, if pressing down arrow, if pressing right arrow, if pressing left arrow, we're going to move our character in those directions. So we'll need motion blocks. Change X and change Y are what we will be using. Change Y is for up and down, so I'll start with that. We'll do 10 for up and then for down we'll do minus 10 and we will test that out by pressing the green flag going up and down okay that's pretty good I think the speed's good too you don't want it to be too slow um, you want people to get to the doors pretty quick and now left and right movement to move to the right I'll move uh, change my X by 10 and left arrow would be change X by minus 10 and so that is the full code for getting a character to move up, down, left, and right in your game. Um, so I did that pretty quickly, so if you want, you can pause the video and try to match this code. All right, moving on. So to set up this game, I think I'm going to need to have um, a couple variables. Variables are these names for numbers basically. So there are ways we can put um, information into kind of a little little box that might change at some point. That's why they call them variables because they're varied, they can change, um, and that'll help us program random doors so that each time you might have a door that opens or doesn't. And it'll also help us keep track of how many doors we've gone through. Um, and also we can keep track of our time if we uh, create a time variable as well. So I'm going to create those. We'll start off with uh, 
good door. So that will be uh, a random number between zero and, or between one and three. So door one, two, or three, one of them will be the good door each time. But it will change. That's why it's a variable. We'll also keep track of the time. Maybe we'll keep track of the time, how long it takes for you to get through all of them. And then also rows. So how many rows of doors you've gone through. So every time you go through one, we'll add to the rows. When you've reached 10 rows of doors, we'll say that the game's over or you win. And then we'll track the time. So that way we can see who's the fastest. Um, you'll notice that these pop up here. I will just move these kind of off to the side because I like seeing them to start. Uh, maybe we'll get rid of this variable, that good door variable, um, at the end when we're done because that would be kind of cheating if you knew what door was uh, breakable before you even got to it. Okay, I think we can go to the door. Oh, right. <clears throat> Inside of the door, I'm going to use a when green flag clicked. And this position's good, so I'll just set it to that position. Um, go to that position, that's fine. Um, and then we need to make sure that it always starts as a closed door. So my looks, I'll have switch costume to close, or yeah, closed. Um, so now it will look like that. So if I accidentally had the door open, press the green flag, now it's closed. Very good. So I'm gonna leave that on its own because I know that's gonna have to change for every door. Uh, some of them are gonna be, or the other two are gonna be farther to the right. So I'm gonna need to change these at some point. So we'll leave them off to the side. The next step is giving the door a num, basically checking to see if it's a good door or not. So we'll say that when green flag clicked um, forever, because your character can always run into the door no matter what. Um, if First, we'll see if you're touching a bean. So the door will check if the bean is hitting it. And if it is, we are going to use, or we're then gonna check a second time. So if it is touching that, if, since this is door one, if the good door, I'm pulling out the good door value, right now it's zero, but that will change later. I'll use an operator for equal sign. If the good door equals not 50, because there's not 50 doors, but this is door one. So if the good door equals one, I will change this guy up here, switch costume to open, and I will let the game know that you just passed a row. So variables will say change row by one. So we just got through another row because we opened a door. And then what we'll need to do is once you go up, then we're gonna let the game know to reset your character. Um, and that's gonna be inside of events and we'll broadcast an event, a new message called uh, Next, reset. Reset doors. Uh, reset row. We'll call it reset row. So the game will know every time this character touches a door. So if the bean, whoops, if the bean touches that door and if the good door number is one. So if the good door number happens to be one and he's touching the door, we will switch it to open and we'll increase or change the row by one and then we will tell the game we should do some reset row stuff now that doesn't do anything yet all it does is kind of announce to the other objects in the game like hey do what you're supposed to do when we reset it 
a row, but we'll decide what that does in a little bit. Okay, I can't really test this right now because the good door is currently zero. But if I go back to my bean and I get another, you can actually put this code pretty much anywhere. Um, if I set my good door to one in the beginning, as we can see now it says one for my good door. If I run into there, it opened up and then nothing happened and that's, that's fine. Uh, we'll fix that shortly. So good door is one, but we don't always want it to be one. We're going to make it a random number between one and three. So every time I play the game, that two will change. <laughs> that or that good door will change to one, two, or three. There it goes. Yeah. Okay. So every time you start a new game, you're not sure what door it's going to be. Perfect. Now here I'm also going to set up the row. I'm going to say, hey, let's start at row one. That makes sense. First row, row one. Great. And we'll, we're going to write some code too that says wait until we're going to get the ending done here while we're here. When the row is greater than, so when my row is greater than 10, hey, that didn't work. We are going to go ahead and stop the game for now. Uh, we may add the timer in at some point, uh, but for now it's just going to stop the game. Okay, perfect. Now uh, let's go back to my door. I think this is all working just fine. It resets a row. Okay, we have to decide what happens when a row is reset. So when in events, when I receive this block, so when I receive, so when the bean pigeon receives reset row, we are going to teleport them back home or to the bottom of the screen, zero and 120. Um, and we'll play a sound, why not? So let's go to the sounds real quick. A meow sound, probably not. Is there a pigeon sound? do one of these. Huh. Alright, I like goose. We're going to do goose. So, play sound. Uh, uh, we just want to do start sound goose. If you do play until done, it'll have to wait until the sound's done before you can move on. Okay, so that's what's hap going to happen to Bean. When you hit the door, it'll send you back. Now, what we're going to do here for a reset row, when I receive a reset row for a door, all it needs to do is close back up. So I'm going to just duplicate this one here and close it. You can also go back to the looks and grab that one, put it in. Um, so let's try this out uh, just with one door. See if we can get a good door equals one. <laughs> Three, two, 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 one. There we go. Okay, that happened kind of fast. So the door switched open, it added a row and reset instantly. So I need to add some weight in there. A pause. So people can see the door actually open. How about 0 0.3 seconds for the weight there? Okay, let's try this again. Wait until we get a door. Perfect. <laughs> the door is always going to be one. That would be really easy. So what we need to do as well, every time a row is reset, we can say... Um, we can tell the game, wait 0 0.3 seconds, and then we're going to do that same code where we set the good door to a random number between one and three. So I could have done that earlier, but I'm gonna place that right in here. Right after the door opens, right before you get reset, the door will change, and then um, the next row should start. Okay.
Perfect. Now I can move on to the creating three doors. Uh, that's very simple. I could just duplicate these down here. Door two, door three. I don't like the positions of these quite yet. There we go. Place them in nice spots. Um, door two, I guess, could have a better... Oh no, they're in the wrong order. Door two is right there. The X, I'll decide, it can be zero. That's close enough. Door three, uh, the X will be, uh, let's do 150, why not? There they go. So now they're all in the right spots. Just by switching these little numbers, um, I can have three of them. Now, door two shouldn't activate when it's a good door of one. It should activate when it's a good door equals two. And for three, we'll do the same. Three. Well, except, you know, three needs to match three. Okay. So let's test this out. Let's see if I made any mistakes here, because I did that pretty quickly. Um, so press the green flag. There's no timer right now. I'm cheating by looking at the good door number. Now if I run into the wrong door, it doesn't let me in. It kind of lets me in. Uh, what I can do there is use something called if on edge bounce. So in this movement code from earlier, I can use um, if on edge bounce in the forever block. And that'll prevent me from, from kind of going through the walls. <laughs> it's kind of, kind of funny. We're bouncing off the corners here. <laughs> kind of like that. Okay, perfect. Uh, can you hit two doors at once? That's kind of... That's kind of funny. Okay. Nice. Um, maybe I'll spread the doors out a little bit. Negative 170. And then the third one can be 170. And that'll make it so it's a little harder to hit two doors at once. Okay, great. Uh, last is time. Uh, so that's the last thing I'm going to add into the game. I'll put it into the bean character. I wouldn't want to put the time into one of these doors. Uh, it'd be hard to find if I wanted to add the code, change the code later. Um, so to do a timer, you can do this in a lot of different ways, um, but I'm going to do it in a way so that you can kind of use it in any game you want. One green flag clicked. Set time to zero. Change. Oops. And then we will use a forever block. And I will say change time by one. Now, if I just let that happen, you'll see this. Your time is just going as fast as it can um, because you're not letting the computer wait a little bit. It wants to just do things as fast as it can, and counting numbers is <laughs> it can do pretty fast. So what we need to do is make sure it waits one second and then loops back up and says change time by one. Wait one second. Change time by one. And then you'll get a timer that works. Um, now naturally scratch when it stops all the timer will just also stop so we'll see how i uh how i do here i need to get through 10 doors i'm going to hide my good door number and let's see how fast i can do this i'm guessing i'll get 30 seconds under 30 seconds is a win for me here all right nope okay good no no i'm gonna lose I need to get luckier. No. There we go. Three in a row. Dang it. Oh no. Oh, I'm gonna get it for sure. Oh yeah, crushed it. Perfect. Okay, the game stopped. It's not like a you win screen or anything. I can add that in real quick. Um. Wow. All right. Twenty one seconds. Pretty good. So that's how uh you can create a game of DoorDash and Scratch. So you guys can try that one out. Uh, go back through the video, copy some of the code. So thanks for watching this Let's Build, and I'll see you next time.